In this tip of the day, let's take a look at undercut machining within one CNC. Now to show you the type of contour we're going to be applying toolpath to, let me hide the front of the part here just by turning that layer off. If I hit the spacebar and select the front view, you can see here is the contour. All right, very nice. I'm going to turn that layer back on. Let's quickly head over to the command manager and within model toolpaths, if you have one CNC mill expert, you're going to have undercut machining. So let's select that. Now within the first dialog box, this is where we're going to define our tool. And of course you can use a lollipop tool if you'd like, or you can use a slotting tool or a slot tool with a tip radius. In fact, that's what I'm using here. And also notice there's a shaft clearance value. This is very powerful in that this will keep the shaft away from the solid model by whatever amount you specify. That's a very great feature. And right now the default is set to 20 thousandths. Let's click next on that. My clearances look great. We'll click next on that. And I'm going to use a radial approach for each depth of cut. I'm going to perform a little radial arc of 125 thousandths. We're going to climb cut. I'll click next. Now for depth of cut, typically you'd use a smaller value than this, but I'm going to be using 50 thousandths for this tip of the day. So let's click next on that. We don't need to specify any additional depths of cut, so we can leave this blank and click next on that. And then for boundary type, I'm using picked because I'm going to be selecting a little wireframe circle I created earlier to help contain the toolpath. All right. And then down here, this is really the envelope in Z that the toolpath is going to be contained. Right now, you can see that the toolpath is going to be contained between Z minus 10 thousandths and Z minus 1.64. By the way, if you click this option called automatic Z, if we have this set to zero, one CNC scans the solid model, gives us the top of the part and the bottom of the part. But of course, you can overwrite that. In fact, I'm going to change that to zero. And for the bottom, I'm going to change that to how about minus, how about minus 1.64, just enough to make sure that that tool goes past the bottom. We'll click finish. One CNC wants us now to digitize the boundary. I'm going to left click and right click. Now, I'm going to click OK here. What's happening here is one CNC wants us to define a safe start point. I'm just going to sketch it. Just take my cursor. I'm just going to sketch a start point right here. This is really a clearance value for each depth of cut. Uh, even though you can sketch it like I'm doing, it's recommended that you physically create a point uh, exactly where you want it. But for this, I'm just going to left click. All right, now with the toolpath created, let's hit the space bar once. Go to a front view. Again, let's hide the front of the solid model there. And why don't we take this into preview? So preview toolpath. And here we go. So here's our slot cutter with a tip radius on there. Going to speed it up just a little bit. But notice how the very edge of the tool always remains tangent to the contour. So as I slow that down, you can see we're tangent and tangent, just like that. We'll speed it up a little bit. And we'll slow it down. How about right here? And again, tangent, tangent, and then speed it up a little bit. That's looking good. And you can see, I'll slow it down. You can see we're tangent there in that little fillet area. Very good. And remember, I gave it a little bit farther to go in Z. So you're going to see the tool go past the bottom of the part. And while it's doing that, it's maintaining tangency as well. It's a very powerful machining operation provided by one CNC mill expert. All right, that's it for this tip of the day. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.